Welcome back Dota fans to the Join Dota League season number 4 Asian Division 1 and 2 playoff between Rave and Myth Trust in this best of 3 series. This is going to be game number 2 with Rave, well, being one game behind. Probably coming into the series most people thought them to be the favorites. I do believe the betting sides were about 75% in Rave's favor, so value betters for Myth so far looking pretty damn good for them. But of course Rave, they should be a strong team, so Myth definitely cannot let their guard down yet. They got one good game, can they repeat their performance? We shall see in this game number two, but looking at the draft, so far the bans exactly the same by Myth Trust as in game number one. Rave though, they themselves have banned out Yayo. Myth Trust of course, they have utilized Yayo as well every now and then, with uh, a combination, for example, Ayo Sven even comes out for Lakels, or well, Lakels on the Sven of course, and somebody from their supports on Yayo in that case. But not to be, and now Rave also bans out the Juggernaut, I mean, Juggernaut is just, it is that strong of a hero, it d does deserve the ban. I mean, it's not like every Juggernaut game wins or anything, that's just not true for any hero. But Juggernaut, once he gets the ball rolling, it's so hard to stop him, I and mean, it's so hard to stop him even if he has a slightly slower start. But Rave do start with a Vengeful Spirit into the Batrider, which was the first pick by Myth Trust. So, what's the second gonna be? Are we gonna see the gold old, just Ninja Boogie Vengeful Spirit and Chrissy being on the center, for example? That was what uh, Rave used to run, I'd say, at the start of autumn, like September, October, something like that. And they crushed the competition with just more or less the same draft every single time, but those were the heroes they were most comfortable on at the moment, though. They might consider maybe a secondary support going for like a disruptor also a pretty good hero up against a bat rider i mean mostly you would think that the eventual spirit being there might already be enough of course rave uh, brew master is still available if they want to go for that one even a tide hunter might be a pretty good pick for them just get some pretty massive team fight for yourself but nope going to be the axe once again so first game didn't really bring them huge success with the hero maybe second game will be a lot different we shall of course see because we do never know what the future brings, or at least I have no idea what the future brings. Hopefully great things, but I can't say for sure. All I can do is just do my own best to make things great, right? Right. Okay, enough of the pseudo-philosophical bullcock. Myth Trust, what's their pick going to be? Seeing the axe. I'm not, I mean, Disruptor is still decent-ish against axe, so they might want to consider that pickup. Although if not... I'd say Puck is always a nice hero to have. Maybe a Scar of Mage. Scar of Mage Batrider combination is definitely a potent one. Just last saw into Mystic Flare, easy kills to be set up like that. What else could they want to run as the secondary pick here? I still think just any kind of a support pickup might be pretty decent. Which Doctor not the greatest against Axe, just because Axe has a lot of armor when the Berserker Skull is activated, so therefore it might not get that much value going. Then again, against other heroes, might still be fine. But it will be the Sky of Mage at the moment. I think it's the safest pick in a sense that, first of all, you don't really give too much away about your strategy to the enemy either. It's I think Rave themselves were kind of expecting the Sky of Mage to come there. I can't be sure of that, but it, it, it's just such a strong combination, the Battle Rider and Sky of Mage, really. And Tide Antler nor the Centaur would have really fit that well into myth. Every now and then teams to run a bat rider and the center and successfully so. Just one on the off lane, maybe one farming safe lane. Something like that, but... Like and now, the man by Myth Trust. Definitely don't want to give Rave just any kind of early mid-game momentum heroes. And Lycan definitely is one of those. And if the axe gets off to a great start, it's just gonna free up so much space for the Lycan to go for easy building pushes. Rave now though, what do they even ban out? I, I think... They have to ban out focusing on more what w would be bad, extremely bad, against what they want to pick, rather than just trying to figure out what myth will run as their next three heroes. Because with the Bat Rider and the Sky of Mage being there, it, it really isn't all that telling about what kind of strategy myth will use. So I think Rave, oh. anti-mage ban might indicate, for example, a, a J.O. Medusa to come out. So myth. Maybe ban out a Medusa now. Of course not uh, a necessity because lots of teams do ban out an anti-mage against Myth Trust anyway, but they do make sure to just take out the Medusa. 
I can't say it's all that surprising having seen the anti-mage ban. It's like, hmm, what hero is anti-mage absolutely excellent against? against Rave, of course. They might have played some kind of mind games here. Because they could have banned out the anti-mage as the fourth one. Which would have meant that Mithras, they have no way to ban out the Medusa anymore. Because Rave, they had the fourth ban. Or the last ban in the second phase. And then they have to pick immediately. So, uh, Rave... I'm not too sure if they just kind of misplayed the situation here in the draft at the moment or if it was entirely intentional to have the Medusa ban to free up something else. But what what uh, other hero... I mean, you never want to really deal with an anti-mage, so I guess that's decent, that that's like logical. Also, it's uh, a anti-mage is good when you have heroes that can create the space and Sky of Mage Patrol definitely or heroes as such. Morphling also taken out now, so just targeting two Lakels heroes here. Lakels of course can play different heroes. They can even go for a Slark if they want to go for that one, for example. A fairly survivable he hero as Rave picking up a Troll Warlord. What's gonna be the next pick for Rave? I mean, hopefully something that can make great use of the Battle Trance. At the moment, Axe, the only... Well, I guess Troll is kind of a hybrid between a melee as well as a ranged hero. But Throw Ranger, I guess, might be a choice for Rave, but up against Patrider Throw, not the greatest of heroes because, well, if anybody, if any hero just jumps next to you, what the hell are you gonna do? I mean, you might have heroes that can like swap you out, like the Vengeful, or the Axe to come in to just to help you out. Knight in Shining Armor, just come in with the Berserker's Call. As Myth now. They might try to consider a Phantom Assassin still. Blur is pretty decent against Troll Warlord who otherwise has a really huge amount of just physical damage coming out and also boosting up the physical damage of your team using the Battle Trance. So having that Blur might be pretty nice for them. Of course a uh, Phantom Assassin a, a hero that doesn't have the greatest of health pools early on. So that doesn't really bode well for him and Troll Warlord having the melee whirling axes creating the mischance. If you're a melee hero yourself it's just more likely for the troll to get close enough for those whirling axes against you. But I still think Slark could be a decent-ish pickup here as well for myth. Shadow Dance would make it so the troll or anybody can't really right-click you at all. Unless you get Berserker Skull before that, but... You can't really be too afraid of some situations, but they do pick up a Wraith King. I hope... I guess as a carry it wouldn't be that bad in a sense that... Otherwise, let's say myth take the Phantom Assassin. Let, let's just speculate. Axe comes in, gets the Berserker Skull, and if Rave would manage to bring down the Phantom Assassin, what then? You just don't have a carry alive anymore. Whereas, if the core is the Wraith King, if Axe jumps him, yes, the Wraith King might die, but well, he's just gonna have a second life. Maybe not early on when the reincarnation is on a massive cooldown, 260 seconds on the first level, then 160 on the second, and 60 seconds, only a mere 60 seconds on the third level. So that that's a good point for Myth, but Rave themselves going for a Slark now. Definitely hero that just more or less any team has run quite a lot in all fairness. Slark of course can make great use of the battle trance which means more attack speed means more essence shift stolen from Slark. But Myth Trust, they go for a Shadow Fiend again. Not too sure how well it's gonna work out this time. Of course Rave it really depends on how they run the axe. But this Shadow Fiend might not have that great of a time this time around in the mid lane. Then again, Cherofin did get ganked a couple of times by the IO Phantom Assassin combination. Sorry guys, had a massive sneezing coming. But we'll see how much pressure Rave can actually apply up on the Cherofin and how do Rave want to lane this? At the moment I would think once again that the axe will head towards the offlane, but it still might be a 4 position axe if they want to go extremely greedy. Now though, Disruptor banned out. Disruptor is a pretty decent hero up against Axe, of course, like already mentioned. Also against the Slark, but with this ban, Rave strongly believe that this Wraith King will be a core pickup here. And to be honest, Rave Slark is really good against Wraith King carry in a sense that he's so just mobile, whereas Wraith King not at all so. And Mithrust, they have the lasso, Slark against the create against that as well. So maybe the Slark. Should have been banned, but then again, Medusa was a highly likely pickup as well for Rave, having banned out the anti mage. Lich, though, the ban by Mithra, so they just don't want Rave to have extra armor to work with.
because they are rather stacked on physical damage at the moment. A decent mix of magic coming in from the Shadow Fiend and the Skyrim Mage, of course, as well. Brave now, though. Are we gonna see a secondary support? Are we gonna see an offlaner? Well, it's a Venomancer, so I guess it's a support, but then again, it there's a slight chance that it might be like a mid laner with a troll safe lane, Slark off lane. There can be something like that as well with the axe being in the jungle, but I would expect the Venomancer to be in this support role here. Maybe focus a little bit more on just trying to jungle up with his uh, plague wards. But we shall see, of course, what Rave just have in mind, have in store for us as myth. Their own last pick about to come. They have 10 seconds for the normal time, 29 left in the reserve as well. So what's it gonna be? Do we see another core hero for themselves? Do we have the rating as a core? No, it's gonna be a lion. A lion, probably not too bad of a hero, man. If he gets the blink, blink hex is always gonna be nice. Against Slark, you always have to be mindful of the dark pack, though, so the hex might not be all that impactful, as it otherwise would be against some other cores. If you blow up the troll, it's of course gonna be nice as well. Ancient seal into finger of death is a good combination as well. So it's nice in that sense, but lion up against Slark. An axe, even a troll warlord in some sense. He just might become fodder if Myth Trust do not have a decent enough early game for the supports. I mean, Lion is one of the more squishy ones, to be honest. But to introduce the lineups, guys, for the second game of the series, Myth Trust leading 1 0, as you can see from this yellow marker here. It is going to be Boom Bell playing the offlane once again, this time around though, not on the center, but on the Batrider instead. My Pro handling the Shadow Fiend once again, leaving Kaneki on the Sky of Mage. With Noki to be the Lion and Lakels playing the core of Rave King for the team. As for Rave though, Chrissy on the axe. Ninja Boogie to play the Vengeful Spirit leading the charts as they are smoked up. Rior to be the troll. Jayo playing that Slark as cast is going to be the Venomancer. Well, they're gonna get an easy kill. Noki can't even get the Earth Spike off. There's the. Never mind. Magic Missile came out. Earth Spike will land on free, but little does it matter. Easy first blood. They just got caught with their pants down completely. So, Chrissy. Getting the first blood, definitely gonna help him out, I mean... Axe, what does he have coming out already? It's gonna be a ring of protection, so... His Tranquil Boots, a hell of a lot closer all of a sudden. They're still gonna hang about for now. Are they gonna run an Axe tri lane with this even, or... What do they plan? Is it Chrissy in the enemy jungle? I mean, you have a lot of armor, so you're gonna be able to jungle fairly effectively with a Sao Shield and the ring of protection. Never mind, it's gonna be Ninja Boogie and Chrissy to be on the bottom lane arc. Ninja Boogie maybe just leaving a ward behind. We shall see. But Chrissy, definitely this Ring of Protection will help him quite a lot in just surviving this lane as it is. You might still die, but Lion, until he gets level 2, it's not that scary because your spike doesn't do that much damage. Nor is it a really massive duration just lockdown. Only 1.02 seconds, I think. Really retarded duration, to be honest. Like 1.02, it's like, what, guys? But... I guess that's how it works. In the meantime, Shea will be up against Boom Bell as Cast coming in. If he lands the Venom Scale with the Pounds to follow, this might be a kill. There's the Pounds. Venom Scale will follow that one. And, oh, what do you know, Rave? They have their second kill of the game already. And it's only one minute into the game. Cast picks that one up. Could have left it for Shea, but, well, supports need gold as well. Boots on Cast definitely will make it so that the next Venom Scale is a little bit easier to land. So nicely done. The Pounds even coming out before the Venom Scale. Guaranteeing the Venom Scale. But then again, had the Pounds missed. They might still have been able to get the kill in all fairness, but... Well, who cares about the could-haves and would-haves and should-haves? Mid lane though, ah, oh, Rior does miss, or rather, they're a little bit short, the ranged whirling axes, so they don't slow, slow down the Shadow Fiend, which in return means that Ninja Boogie cannot get in range with the magic missile. But 2-0, two, two Rave already looking to off to be, or looking to be off to a great start. Boombell, of course, cannot really do too much against the Slark because Slark is a hero that can definitely handle him solo. And Ninja Boogie, though, gets the stun onto my bro. There's the slow as well. Whirling Axis melee versions to come out. One more right click. Rior brings him down and Ray, well, I guess they're pretty damn angry about how game number one went because they are striking back and they are striking hard. 3-0 before the two minute mark. And well, they're also gonna get some nice room control. Bottom lane, of course, they will not be able to grab a room from there, which is a bounty room, so. Kanaki probably happy about some extra XP and gold. In the meantime, the Rior gonna be able to get himself a regen rune. Oh god, he was so low on health. He does have himself a bottle and wall boots for Ninja Boogie coming out. 
So Ninja Boogie, his uh, just effectiveness in roaming is gonna be probably like double just because you can get closer to the Shadow Fiend without Shadow Fiend being able to react at all. And Shadow Fiend, although he has 10 Necromasteries stacks, which isn't all that bad considering he did die as well at one point. He still doesn't have boots. Bottle is... Never mind, this boots first, so not... Or can't even go for the bottle. He wants to make sure that he doesn't get ganked, and... That's the biggest weakness of a Shadow Fiend mid lane. The ease with which you can gank that hero with. Chrissy, though, just farming up the jungle now. Level 3 already, so... Not the greatest, but not doing that bad. And, of course, gonna get some extra XP. One more counter helix, or just two more right clicks. That works as well. Also, the big camp is stacked, so... It's gonna be a triple stack here for the... The axe to farm out. The thing is that Axe needs to commit to this one. If he goes away for too long, the unholy aura from the Satyrs will heal the camp back up. Boom below. Trying to get some XP. I mean, Myth off to a rocky start, but at least Lakel still farming up extremely well on the Great King bottom lane. 21 and 4, so 7 last hits ahead of the Slark. So even if the Batrider hasn't had the just best of times top lane, still has 10 last hits. Still has been managing to slow down the Slark's farm by a tiny bit, and I think Lakel's Hand of Midas abound for him, or inbound for him. Just has lots of gold pulled up already as it is, and I think Rave King Hand of Midas is one of the better ones to go for. You definitely want to get that level 16 as fast as you can, because the 60 second cooldown on the reincarnation is kind of what makes a Rave King valuable. I mean, you have pretty nice stun as well, so that's gonna be good, but Chrissy has himself a healing sound now. Already up to level 4. Stacks, well, do not succeed for the quad one, but it's still a triple stack. Mid lane my pro, 15 to 6 compared to a 13 and 7 troll. So they are, although they got the kill, Shadow Fin still of course manages to farm up. We have a triple stack waiting for him as well. Mid, mid camp hasn't been stacked yet. But still, the triple big camp, of course, will be some extra nice just flash farm coming out for the Shadow Fiend. And like I already mentioned in game number one as well, just flash farm is one of the strengths of the Shadow Fiend. So sometimes you see like Shadow Fiend dying four or five times in the mid lane, yet somehow still magically managing to just catch up and take over in farm. This might be the case this game as well. But Slark also has caught up by a tiny bit to Lakel. Lakel still ahead though. Needs a couple more last hits. If he gets the Siege Creep and one more creep or just see creep and waits for a little while he is going to have his hand of Midas finished so about a five five and a half minute Midas a solid timing considering you haven't gotten first blood or haven't been a part of any single kill so he just need yeah he has the gold for it now not gonna be able to use it from this creep wave because he doesn't want to miss a single last hit does miss one anyway a little bit unfortunate but hand of Midas is finished five minutes 18 seconds in gonna be able to use it the first time five minutes and 23 seconds not that it matters that much, but my pro, he's gonna get slowed down. Shadow raises, well, he got one off, but there's the magic missile. Easy kills on the Shadow Fiend once again, or are they easy kills? Nope, no, they're not. He's running away, trying to juke into the fog, and well, it's gonna be a success. Night time for the win as Ninja Boogie. One long Shadow Raise, oh! First of all, wasn't in range. Second of all, would uh, wouldn't have been there in time anyway. As Chrissy drops down low, farming up the stack, but he's fine. Tranquil Boots are on the ground, but nobody is there to just come and pick them up. So Chrissy, he's gonna survive for now. But my pro man, what an escape, just running into the trees. And well wait, not having enough firepower to get less, I guess just going to keep on going. If they had a haste run troll for example, easy, but oh god, there's double damage. I guess that might be just as good and knocky. Lion, you do not want to be there. Run, run for your life, little lion. Simba, run. Of course, looks laughing like a real lion, but slow is there, pounce to follow, okay. Lion 6 minutes in being level 2 is actually pretty horrible for me, if in all fairness. I have no idea what the Lion has been trying to accomplish or what he's been doing. Maybe stacking Ancients? Nope, Ancients haven't been stacked a single time. So, he hasn't been bottom lane to help that one out, really. I, I really should have paid more mind to what Noki is doing. I guess he's trying, or has been trying to soak up something from the top lane, but... Up against the 11-7 Slark, you're just gonna be fodder, Lion. I mean, you're probably gonna be fodder anyway, but... You need levels, you need them badly, you need Finger of Death as early as you can. My pro mid lane trying to outrun my pro, but it's slowed down. There's the Whirling Axis melee form. But even with the double damage, just not enough uh, movement speed, even with the face boost to catch up to the Shadow Fiend in time. So, Rave 4 to 0. Myth 
just the support, what the support utilization hasn't been the greatest, but Pumbel, he's going to be farming up towards his Blink Dagger now, instead of um, leaving all those tasty stacks to my pro, but it's probably better for Pumbel to get a fast Blink Dagger than for the Shadowfin to get a little bit of extra gold. It doesn't look like Shadowfin is going for the Hand of Midas in any case as it is at the moment. So he doesn't need it that badly, but with the Blink Dagger, which can be completed and purchased up now from the Wet Rider, which uh, is done as well by Boom Bell. They can start just setting up kills, and with the kills, money usually follows. If you can at least keep up the pace. But at the moment, I mean, Lakels is number one in farm with the Hand of Midas, but suddenly three heroes close behind Chrissy, pretty, pretty damn close to his own blink. They're probably gonna get it pre 10 minutes in. So Axe Blink or Axe overall this game looks to go a lot better than it did in game number one. But who's to say if it can actually properly follow up with just the proper rotations getting the kills. Is Noki hits level 4, still not too close to level 6 though, 8 minutes in. Same can be said for Skyrim as well but they are smoked up on the bottom lane. Lakels is around, they want to go with the first Blink Dagger gank but Rave, nobody's coming in to defend this. Lakels' push just isn't threatening enough at the moment. I kind of made like, screw this guys, I'm TPing bottom lane. I'm just gonna get some XP for myself, I mean... I can't... Noki can't be the only support getting XP in gold, right? But Boomba's still around, smoke will expire soon enough, but they know Ninja Boogie is there, and immediate jump with the lasso. Ray Fire Blast, of course, will follow. One Shadow Race to finish the kill. And with the Illusions, they might even bring down this tower. Glyph is already in cooldown. Half the duration left on the cool... Well, of course, if you kill this tier 1, it's gonna be refreshed. But Axe has his blink dagger as well now, so it was a pretty 9 minute blink even. As mid lane, Cast comes in with the battle trance, with the plague wars, they want to go for the tier 1. Not too sure if they will succeed, but some nice damage done nonetheless. So Myth, they are getting at least something accomplished now. Getting some levels on the supports as well with just dedicating some lanes to them. Still, not that easy for a single support to be up against Slark, who is going for a shadow blade. And he's gonna have it done in about 200 gold, so that's a pretty great farm coming out on J.O. And it's just gonna force Smith to go for lots of sentries. Dust, of course, isn't even that useful up against just this Slark with the Dark Pact. So they need sentries, but even with sentries being there, you can still Shadow Dance and still be able to escape. With like a Pounce Out, which is level 3, so almost the minimum cooldown on it already. 12 seconds now, but once it gets to level 10, it's gonna be a 8 second pounce. Shadow Blade is finished in the meantime as well. Definitely does provide great synergy with the Slark ultimate. And they do have the blink initiation of the axe, so they don't need a blink pounce that badly. Nice troll mid lane, has himself a bottle and well, we do have a smoke in the meantime. Chrissy, he also wants his first blink tagger to be a success and... Well, if you look at how many heroes there are in the mid lane, but there's the blink lasso up on three, Venom scale misses, there's the mystic player as well, they're gonna get the kill with the help of Lakels coming in. Or well, Lakels, not too sure if he even got a single point of damage into that, but uh, he probably did. Does have the second assist and well, they have gotten two kills with the team overall. So, Rave, the gank a little bit late to the party, but they still might find a couple of one and Lion, oh god, now run! Oh, stand up, Berserker's call is there as well, Dunk to follow. Lion just didn't stand a chance, of course. Myth still came out ahead in the sense that they got the more important kill and Lion. He is so close to level 6 that I don't think it matters this much at the moment whether he died or not. So Myth just uh, regaining some composure after losing 4 kills early on to Rave. Rave of course still have the blink axe and that is scary. I mean it's rather hard for Myth to bring down axe. Maybe with a mystic player it gets a lot easier but Lakels might be in some trouble if Chrissy wants to jump him. They know he has reincarnation ancient seal just in case onto Chrissy at the moment. NGT even level 3 is getting maxed out. But will they jump luck kills? Looks like Chrissy wants to do something at least, but with the creep wave being there, it's going to be a lot easier. As luck kills, just he wants to get a last hit and will be successful, so no battle hunger anymore. It's only level 1 anyway, it's more to just slow down the target and get some extra speed for herself. Drums in the meantime finished up on luck kills, so wants to at least somewhat remedy the mobility issue that usually plagues Raving, especially up against a Venomancer. Venomancer is actually pretty good and just kiting around Lakels, but look at this, a four-man smoke coming. They don't have a, well, never mind, they do have a level six on Lion. Cast, run while you still can. Well, too late. Sorry, dude. Earth Spike will follow, no finger of death necessary. Easy kill, so Myth, get the third kill on the board. 
As whoa, never mind. More heroes coming. Finger of death. They get the kill on X. Got the Berserker Skull, but didn't matter. Like, El's still alive. Your slow down flame break pushes him back by a tiny bit in the back line. Cheo tries to do something as much as he can. He brings down Noki Micro. Channel his ultimate. Look at Cheo. Immediate Shadow Dance after the Requiem of Souls. The silence is there, but well, he has a haste rune. Easy escape for him, but a 4 for 1 suddenly kill score. It's tied up with a huge engagement for them. Venomancer, of course, being dead before much of anything happened, but Axe blinked in, yet still only has Tranquil Boots. Level 8 doesn't have the greatest of health pools, and well, Lion makes sure to punish with the Finger of Death. 1k in the bank for Lion. Can go for Tranquil Boots, can go for Arcane Boots, or maybe just save up for Blink straight up. So... Slark joins the fight with his Shadow Blade, does find one kill but only a support line unfortunately for them. Losing four heroes, it's it's a massive turn for Myth. I mean, if you look at the graphs, they have been just regaining pretty much everything for the past couple of minutes as it is. But up to a 1.8k lead for them in net worth. XP, about 2k as well. Boom, well, there's the blink, but the post misses Berserker Skull though, does land and with the dunk, it's an easy kill. No time for Rave to react. I mean, the TP was started pretty much immediately as the gang came, but... The hero was just dead before Lakel, so can he get the stun on cast? Oh, the Plague Ward! Ninja Boogie though, he's gonna get stunned, but Lakel might lose his life, has the level 2 reincarnation, so that's a little bit better as Chrissy. He's around, will get silenced. Lakel though, can he turn around, maybe with a stun? He's gonna try to, never mind, just run away now. Do not lose your life for nothing. Wave of Terror is there. He might lose his life to poison Chrissy. Battle Hunger, not gonna get in range. So he's not gonna lose his reincarnation, I think. Yeah, just... Uh, poison Sting, not enough levels into it at the moment he did drop low almost died with trying to run back in but it's just the kiting power of a venomancer coming out at the moment so brave king maybe a blink next i would kind of hope so just have to follow up to the blink uh, lasso but at least rave they got one kill anyway earlier on it on a bat rider not too shabby as well they laying out the four staff which is the bread and butter of a bat rider blink and four staff so the graphs, getting closer to zero in net worth at least. If you look at the towers, myth, never mind, it is absolutely even, but it's a smoke into a smoke, Cheo. Has an invis rune, has a shadow blade to follow if need be. There is a sentry down, but they're running towards the bottom side. Ninja Boogie, the smoke ends, they do see Chrissy now. And there's a firefly as well, Ninja Boogie, he's gonna be the target most likely. Blinking, lasso comes up, but Cheo, he's there as well. Shadow, well, he gets silenced before he pounds, but Kaneke, I think he's still gonna lose his life. Maybe so, Chrissy comes in with blink, dunk, oh god. That's filthy. Sky of Mage, just easy fodder. It's a support for support. But Myth did rotate lots of heroes in there. So in that sense, they lose a little bit more. Since Troll is farming up at the same time. Going for a mech. Only has a headdress at the moment, so not too much farm on him. But Axe still doing fairly well for himself. Will have the blade mill finished shortly. Just needs the robe of the Magi. So gonna be able to return some damage as mid lane. Lakel's running through the river. Get slowed down by the poison stick, just magic missile as well. He's plenty tanky though, he's going for a straight off PKB by the looks of it. Has the Ogre Club finished up. Not too sure how much a PKB we will do in, even in this game as Cheo. Bottom lane just pushes out the lane with Dark Pack, wants to get the tier 1. But really, I mean, I, I guess it also might be a Heaven's Halberd. Pretty nice against Slark, just the pure evasion of it. Also Troll, not going for a PKB anytime soon with going for a mech first. So, well, Cheo, he gets slowed down in the meantime. Do they have the lasso? No, but the Mystic Player will bring down the Slippery Fish anyway. Shadow Blade, Shadow Blade does you no good if you're under the tower. And I think he thought that the Battle Rider has the lasso, so he tried to just run the other way. In the meantime, Lakil, he's gonna go for Nerwine. Double damage does get denied. Nice uh, micro off the fake wards here. But 8 to 8, the kill score. Myth, they are still ever so slightly ahead in net worth. Well, mostly thanks to the Slark kill, right? It's about now, but 1500 in XP still, so they're not looking bad, but neither is Rave. It really will come down to just initiations. We've seen so many smokes by both sides. Do we have any left on the Radiant side? Not a single smoke for Rave. Well, they have one left as Blade Mail is finished up on the Axe now. Four Step though up on the Battle Rider as well. Noki only about 300 gold short of getting himself a Blink Dagger. So Blink Hex will be huge. That's gonna mean that he doesn't have to endanger himself before he can almost guaranteed get off his entire spell set otherwise it's like you have to be maybe a little bit too close to the fight to begin with and then you get like berserker skull or like pounced by slark although you might even get just shadow blade pounced from back lines as Cheo has picked himself up a perseverance i guess the lincoln sphere is going to kind of guarantee that you will not get lassoed 
even in, like even against ancient seal it's pretty decent because ancient seal is also pretty hard to deal with i mean of course you have to time the ancient seal so that it won't get dark packed off but even then now though my pro he's getting closer to his pkb if they get this tower he might as well have it finished if he gets the last hit for it as well noki he's around his blink dagger also hinges upon the just completion of this tower kill or the success of this tower push and lucky as well has picked up a sand I guess there's a tiny chance for an SNY, but I think him and Salbert is probably the better choice. Evasion gonna be nice up against the battle trance. But there's Noki getting the blink dagger. Reorder in the meantime, still split pushing. I think he has the mech finish now. Yes, he does. Another solid 700 gold on top of that. Unless Boombell finds the Kuder kill and Kuder. Well, spotted out is. Never mind, it's just a blink of Rior. So Rior gonna be safe. Not gonna be found by anything. Noki has his own blink flying out. Okay, let's getting more gold. He's still number one in net worth. Of course, with the hand of minus, you would expect him to be there. At least since Rave's momentum has been just stopped or slowed. But Cheo still applying pressure to the bottom lane, so they are split pushing Rave. They are just a little bit toying around with myth. They did manage to split push excellently in game number one as well, I do have to say. So Rave, they have the split push tactic down. But they do back off for now, just in case. And Roshan, it is pinged out Ninja Boogie. Has a level 3 wave of terror, minus 5 armor coming out from that. They should have plenty, especially if they activate battle trance as well. They have the heroes necessary to tank it up. To be honest, if Vladimir's offering will be pretty good for their team on really anybody. But Cash doesn't have too much farm at the moment. Ninja Boogie really cannot afford one either. So it's gonna be a tier 1 for a Roshan. Favoring Grave, but then again, there's gonna be a PKB thanks to that on Shadow Fiend. PKB, I mean, it's nice against Venomancer, for example, against the magical damage. But against Venom scale, to be honest, not that effective. I guess it does help up against Slark a tiny bit as well. Berserker Skull, though, doesn't care at all about PKB and immediate smoke after Roche. I just love Roche into smoke movements. And they might find an easy kill in the form of Kaneki, but Noki, he's around as well on the Lion. Blink. Oh god, they get the Aegis down immediately. There's a jump, they get Shriori as well, the Hex is even there. So maybe not the greatest of usage of this ability. This is Noki still on the run. By Pro, he's around, but doesn't pop the BKB yet. He gets past, gets stunned up as well. There's the Requiem of Soul, so Cheo drops low. Just blink forward by my Pro. Never mind, was it a swap? Yes, it was a swap by Christy. He misses the dunk. They still have the Reincarnation. Lakels will lose his life to the poison damage, I do believe. It's the first usage of the Reincarnation, but it's fine. It's a 2 for 1. Plus, they got the Aegis immediately down with Noki just Earth Spike, Finger of Death. I'd say that the pretty, that it's a pretty good fight considering that the Sky of Mage just kind of fell over from the jump of Rave. So, nice fight. Rior, I mean, the Hex and Lasso at the same time wasn't the greatest usage by Myth, but in the end it's fine for them. They do have to be a little bit more careful with the reincarnation being on cooldown now, but they got some nice XP from that Lakelos. Still needs another solid 3 levels to get that level 3 reincarnation, but with the Hand of Midas, it shouldn't be that far off and well, whether it be SNY or whether it be the Talisman of Evasion to come out for the Heaven's Albert, he's gonna have it finished soon enough and Lakels, man, yeah, switch your targets, nicely done, Lakels, not Lakels, Noki, they're just, Mana Drain is such a useful ability, I mean, you don't really have too much mana to work with, yet you're still getting something done at Lakels, it will be the SNY, so he wants to be as mobile as he can as ninja boogie he's going to get jumped or is it crazy can they get the lasso they can but the sun will follow immediately mystic flares then he gets dragged out of it slight misplaced but with flame break with the follow up damage they get him down anyway before he can dunk and berserk is called properly down or do it to anybody at least but the kills yasha isn't delivered yet so he's not that fast poison sting is on him as well i guess blink dagger is or does have a really high success or rather a low success rate in this game just because if Lakelis he goes in once, it's highly likely he won't be able to use Blink Tiger or even before that, Plague Wards might just scout and damage him out anyway, so he cannot blink for god knows how long. So SNY is decent ish in that regard. And now even if the poison thing still just moving pretty damn fast thanks to the SNY. In the meantime, Jo does bring down a tower. My pro does come in, but at least with the safety of his BKB he should almost always be fine up against a Slark. Until of course Slark. Gets a Eye of Sky, but at the moment, Lincoln's is the item for him, and he's number one in net worth. Last hit, 159, number one in there as well. So Cheo has been playing a pretty good Slark game thus far. Seven, or has been a part of seven of the nine kills that their team has gotten. Also Yasha now though, finished up on my pro. I think for him it's probably Manta style. But Cheo, is he gonna be in some trouble? Has the Shadow Blade still activated? So I don't think Myth know he's around, but there's a gem on Boom Bell. 
So that thing makes things a lot harder for Cheo. And well, Cheo has an invis rune. Does he know there's a gem? Maybe he does, but Myth, unfortunately, for themselves, going a slightly wrong direction. If you look at the graphs, though, net worth completely zeroed out. Mid lane, though, Micro tries to get the tower to deny Cheo, brings it for himself instead. XP slightly in Myth's favor, but game, in all, or for all intents and purposes, is tied up. In kills, only a two kill difference. Net worth and XP more or less the same for both. Venomancer, though, does have the point booster, so a little bit more durable. Has himself 1.2k to follow up as well. So Aghanim Scepter, once he gets that, it might tip the scales a little bit. Although, probably Lion, he's accepted his just role as jump in, get all of your spells off, and die. Because you, you cannot expect the Lion to do more because of how squishy he is. Yes. Well, 1.3k up on Jayo now as well on the Slark. I guess Scotty is still probably the best next choice. Slow down the Brave King. Slow down the Shadow Fiend. Or really anybody you champ. Chrissy also going for a BKB by the looks of it. This game definitely BKB must or will be a great item for Mift Trust to have. Or for Rave to have rather up against Mift Trust. But can you get the BKB in time so far? They're just waiting for yours BKB possibly. They are extremely grouped up to make sure Mift doesn't catch them. And if, of course, well, if you're a battler, you want to go for those pickoffs, but if you can't fight them, well, what can you do? You just don't want to run into five where Brave are waiting for them as well. But Akels now has himself a plate mail, so it looks like it's going to be the AC next for their team. Definitely not a bad choice. I mean, they have a pretty decent amount of minus armor coming out from Presence of the Dark Lord. But Brave, they have, of course, Ninja Boogie on the Vengeful, minus six armor coming out from the Wave of Terror. So it's going to be more or less negated. From the AC, of course. And some extra, extra attack speed. Definitely not bad for Rave King either. And the thing is, though, as long as Rave King stays alive, there's gonna be life steal for the Shadow Fiend as well. 30% of it. It's pretty massive, but Boombell and Kane Kaneki, they are still hanging about. They want to go for a kill. Cheo, not an easy target, but I guess Ninja Boogie would be one. Oh god! The Firefly was scouted out of Boombell. Can you escape Kaneki? Does TP out with the help of the force staff of Boombell. He blinks out himself as well. We'll find a haste rune. Might run into Rior with this. A little bit accidentally, but does he see Rior? He does. Oh god, had you just run this way? Easy lasso into dragging him. God, no. Oh, he got the BKB off Nyoki. He blinks in. And he's gonna get dunked. Lasso still comes out. I don't know if it's the best choice. Force staff is there. But he's just gonna escape. That lasso was... A waste. Of course, really nice BKB timing as well by the troll. Just, I'm not too sure if he saw the lion before he blinked or what, but... They just lose a lion, but then again, it was a 10 second BKB charge for a lion. Not the worst of trades, as Boombell's still around, but no lasso anymore. So, ha if he had lasso now, easy kills. I mean, blink, Rior, force them to the low ground, Mystic Flare to follow, by him. Dead. I mean, he doesn't have a BKB anymore. So, that lasso was an extreme waste. I think he should have just escaped with his haste. Roshan, though, at least not up for another minute and a half or so. Brave, of course. If it is up, it's rather easy for them to claim it for themselves. But Ninja Boogie places down a sentry ward. Battle Rider still running around with the gem. Yes, he is. But we haven't seen any kind of action for quite some time. People just farming up. And it looks like Brave getting like single pickoffs, getting a couple of towers, and just maybe more farming a little bit better across the board. They are getting the advantage. 3k in net worth now. XP 1500 as well. PKB will soon be finished on Chrissy, so Myth, I, I guess they feel rather confident in their late game. So it's going to be Slark and Troll for the most part up against the Shadowfiend and Rave King. It's hard to call it, but Venomancer Ultimate, especially if it will get Agonis buffed, is a really scary thing. Even an axe can still dunk people left and right, get the extra just mobility boost. But there's the Blink Berserk Skull Noki. Poor Lion, he gets jumped. And that's going to be another tier too, so Myth. I mean, they were looking good with their movement at some point, but Rave now... Lo looks like they just know what buttons to press. I mean, Flame Break comes out, slows down the push a little bit. But they're gonna have to come back with all of them, and... Brave King, he's not carrying a TP, he just has to run. Of course, at least he's pretty speedy, but... They're losing a lot of damage, they have to pop the Glyph already. Lakels wants to come in from behind, has a level 2 ultimate. If they get one kill, he's gonna have a level 3, but is he gonna go down before your... He gets Lasso, but swapped out immediately, because he gets a Berserker Skull, Lakels will lose his life before he gets level 16. So has that slightly longer cooldown, but they still might go for a couple of kills, or will they, my pro? His PKB kind of wasted as well. 
Poison damage will not bring down Sky of Mage. Does get back to the base in time, but well, they do lose the Bat Rider, so Rave, they win a fight. Of course, Noki wasn't even around with the Finger of Death. We haven't seen too many fingers to begin with, but Rave, they're ready in Cheo. He can drop as low as he wants with the Shadow Dance being there for him. Just get out of vision and easy health region. They have the mech still as well. That was a huge fight. There's no Requiem of Souls anymore. There's no Lasso. Rave. Well, they do still have to fight. Or oh, oh, Chrissy jumps in. Noki once again. Poor Lion. Why did he stay even this far up? I have no idea. He has a blink for a reason. As uh, Cheo does drop low as well. But like I said, he can just go back off. Get back to full HP. Man. Myth, they... They are still farming well on their just cores, but it feels like they're falling a, a little bit apart with their shot calling. Just Lion, first of all, getting jumped. No reason for the Lion to go that far up when you know that danger is close by. And suddenly there's a BKB finished on Chrissy, so doesn't even care that much about the Lion anymore. And Shadowfiend, he's on BKB down to 7 seconds and really hasn't been able to do anything with... I, I don't think a single charge has been like going towards anything massive for him. There's a Yasha now in Ryoid as well. Might be an SNY for himself. Might be a Manta style to get rid of the Ancient Seal. Although I don't, wouldn't count on it. Kaneki, he's gonna get jumped. They, they just need some vision. I mean, they had a gem after all, yet the vision is all for Raven. There's the Berserker Skull. Stops my pro from peeking out. Another kill for them. And that's 60 seconds without the Shadow Fiend Rave. They can just go high ground now. It's gonna take them a little bit for the Creeper to actually arrive in the base, but this is probably like one of the best opportunities for them. Roshan, they were about to spawn in about 10 seconds time as well. Man, 15 to 11 Rave. Uh, looking good. Absolutely awesome even, I'd say. Suddenly, a 7k Netro Fleet for them. 4k in XP as well. So, can we see a proper fight for Myth? I mean, it's not like they have the most massive of team fights. And Rave, they realize that as well, that Myth, they really pick off oriented. But Rave themselves are getting mass pick offs because Myth... They are spread out in farming, whereas Rave, somehow, although they are rather grouped up on the map, maybe with the exception of Cheo, they still manage to get the farm, although they are grouped up, and just get the pickoffs thanks to that as well. AC is finished now, though, on Bakel, so it makes them a little bit stronger, but then again, Eye of Skadi will also be done on Slark soon enough. Needs another 400 or so gold for the Orb of Venom. And Roche, well, what do you know? It's gonna go down with Lightning Speed with Troll Warlord just attacking away at it. Having the fervor maxed out. So, ages for the troll. Rior, they need to bring him down twice. And Myth just not there in time with the reactions. They do have that one war, but I guess they didn't know it's going on. Or maybe didn't expect it to go down that fast. So, they have to deal with another ages. Last ages didn't get almost any value out, but... This one, I have a feeling it might be a little bit more impactful. Skadi is finished now, thanks to the Roshan Gold as well for J.O. Cost has himself an Aghanim Scepter, so they're getting their items. Whereas Myth can't say they're getting anything huge that might just be like, okay, I'm gonna win the team fight now thanks to this one item. At least there's a level 3 ultimate for the Rave King, so 60 seconds on the reincarnation is pretty good. He does have a TP this time around as well, and oh, they might find J.O. They do as well, they get to pop the Link with the force if they need follow-up stun. They get the Brave Fire Blast, there's the Hex as well, they get the kill, that's huge. Well, if only he had the Ages, and suddenly, for about 70 seconds, Brave, they won't be pushing in, I think. That's a huge pick of really fast, just, uh, ability usage from the Battle Rider as well. Immediate force have to pop the Link and last out the follow before, well, Slark even managed to react. I mean, Brave, they're still... Posing themselves so as to go for a pickoff. Lakels might be in trouble here. And Lakels, he gets jumped. There's the stun. Slow down as well. He's going to lose his reincarnation so damn fast. Of course, he's going to be able to come back. Didn't get the stun, stun off before. And I think Blink Berserk is called. Yes, Lakels going to lose his life twice. Or is he PKBs come out? No respect will save, save them. Cast does get stunned up. Finger of death as well. So they get the one counter kill. But Lakels goes down. My pro. He gets swapped back in. Requiem of Souls does do some damage. But is it going to be enough? I don't think so. They need Lakels, but they won't have him. Doesn't have buyback either. Rior. Almost lost his ages, but well, almost doesn't count for anything. Noki and Kaneki drop down to just Venomancer Poison. So in the end, still Rave come out ahead, only losing the Venomancer and well, Slark was dead before. So in this particular fight, losing the Venomancer yet, managing to kill the Rave King twice and the Shadow Fiend as well. Of course, the BKB is making it so that Lion suddenly, oh, well, no effect. I really think, I mean, Lion got a pretty decent time Blink Tagger. 
I would have liked to see them actually make use of the blink there before the BKBs come out, but I'm not too sure. They were trying to go for a couple of pickoffs, but Ray being as grouped up and just split pushing Myth didn't have the chance. Maybe just brute forcing a tower would have been better. I mean, Rave King can easily just tank it up in the front lines. But now suddenly tier 2 in trouble for Myth. Just Battle Trans activated and don't think they can save this. Flame Break tried to buy some time, but just not enough. So all the outer towers are gone. Brave, if they win one fight without buybacks on Myth, it just might be triple raxing because all the tier 2 towers have been destroyed. Troll gets himself an SNY as well, extremely fast himself. 7.5k net XP lead. About 8k, nearing 9,000 for net worth for Rave. So Myth, they, they, they're definitely still not out of this game. I mean, they have some pretty good late game themselves. But I think Rave have what it takes now. Especially since they so far at least have been able to control Roshan fairly well also. So at least, well, never mind. Ninja Boogie, he's the one to pick up a... Vladimir's offering, so I was talking about it earlier, definitely a good item for their team. Lots of melee heroes, I mean Troll for the most part wants to be a melee form to just get those bashes going. But 13 to 17 the kill score. Rave just getting farther and farther ahead, getting the better kills. Of course last time around Lachelis he just got jumped solo and tanky as he may be, he's not nearly tanky enough to take on 4 heroes of Rave. I don't think he ever will be, and at the moment, he could definitely use a damage item, I mean, he's attacking fairly fast, has the built-in crit, but the crit can only do so much for you if your just normal damage isn't all that high. So something like a Abyssal Blade, I think, would be perfect for the next item, if you can even farm it up. The moment though, with the Firefly, they do drag the creep away completely, but Rave, they are poised to just go for the push. They are ready to go for one decisive fight and so far Sheriffin, the only one to have buyback and even if you have buyback, you do slightly less damage because you don't have the souls to follow up. So the tower is under siege from the Plague Wars by more or less everything. As Lakels does stun up Rior now, KO. Lincoln Sphere is popped, so he can get Lasso, Dior activates the Battle Trance, but the Glyph comes out immediately in response. Lakel no blink to jump in though. So it, it's just kind of a standoff, but Rave, they are slowly but surely just bringing down this tower. Aegis is reclaimed now though, so won't be able to make good use of that. And with this Rave, do they back off? Do they try to just wait for a, another hero to just push out like Lakel's did before? Or never mind. Oh god, this game, it started off rather promising with Rave just getting lots of kills, but it's been just mostly a farming game. <laughs> farm for farm, guys, farm for farm. There is a smoke now, though, Myth, they want to make a move. Troll picks up a blink there. Guess he wants to close the distance a little bit easier as well. Lion is level 11. They, if they can get Geo, blink Hex, of course. I mean, they're gonna have to pop something else. Blink, 4 step, Hex is there as well, Earth Spike. They get everything, but the Dark Pack came out before. Mana Drain, not gonna be enough. Well... Dark Pack guy is too strong, so much spent from Myth, Lasso, Finger of Death, everything, BKB comes out, Troll jumps in, can they do it? My pro is around as well, Lakels once the BKB expires on Rior, he might go down, Rayfire Blast is already in cooldown though, and Lakels does dodge the Venom scale, but he's gonna stay in fight or is he? Nope, they're backing off, maybe they should try to fight, but then again, no ultimate for them, so they do back off for now after all. I mean, BKB is on cooldown on Troll, so I guess killing him wouldn't be that hard to banish for Myth, but... They're gonna play it safe, just Slark so hard to kill, man, if he didn't have the Lincolns, things would be a hell of a lot different, but just one Dark Pact to save them all. At least more heroes are getting buybacks on Myth, so that's a positive at the moment. Gem though picked up on a Venomancer, so the little vision that Myth Trust had to work with, they're not gonna be able to have that for, for too much longer. 2.8k on Slark as well, Basher might be next, of course at the moment I think saving for buyback. Even if all the lanes are pushed out in your favor, might be the safe choice. Oh, the Hex comes out onto the troll. Never mind, no follow up in time. He has the BKB just off cooldown. He's gonna get last of the immediate swap. There's the Blink Berserker called Dunk number one, my pro. He's gonna go down next. Dunk number two. Just too much damage coming out from the troll. Connect. He slowed down as well. Buyback. He's there. Misty Flare almost brings down Cast, but he does manage to stay alive. No poison damage for the enemy side. Chrissy picks up the Aghanim Scepter, although he is pretty damn low on mana. Just. Can get one more Berserker Skull pretty much. But they get the gem, they get free kills as well. Buyback out from Shadow Fiend. 
I think Rave, they're going to take high ground from this. I don't think Myth can fight, and I have no idea why they even went in without Lakelis being there, for example. Myth, this game just haven't felt as connected as they were in game number one. Definitely a little bit weird, if you ask me. But, they are still holding on, they haven't lost the rack, so I guess it's fine until that happens. As, oh, Noki, he gets the hex on Rior, didn't have the BKB, still on second, on cooldown for 5 seconds, but kills. Just not doing nearly enough damage with the missed chance, of course, being there as well. Blink dunk, Lakels, he's gonna go down, Bash Lord Dior comes in, too much attack speed, Lakels. Berserk is called up, and well, with him going down, don't think there's any chance for them to do anything at all. He does have buyback though, Cast pops his ultimate onto my pro, my pro just, yeah guys, have to back off, sorry. The base is calling, well... Rax to survive though. There's the blink, lasso, they get cast, of course. He already used the ultimate, so his death doesn't mean anything. BKB in the meantime, purchased up by the Slark. So they hold on to the high ground, but their chances are diminishing. I mean suddenly Lakels is 5k behind of his Slark. And he's had that hand of Midas for about 33 minutes or so. I, I, I just don't see a way for Myth to do this anymore unless Ray really starts just giving away kills left and right. But I, I don't think that's gonna happen, and especially now with his Aghanim's axe. The dunks are real, and this troll, although he doesn't have many items, he's still doing a pretty nice amount of damage with the Vengeance Aura, as well as the Vladimir's being there for him. So, not looking too shabby at all. I mean, he's just a Bash Lord as well. Battle Trance, plus the uh, melee form of the Berserker's Rage. It, it's just too much for anybody on Myth to handle if... If Rior has his own BKB and won't get stunned during the duration, for example. They need some lockdowns for him. At least his BKB is wearing down. Only 5 seconds now. So it might be doable, but then again, Shio, he's gonna come in with a fresh 10 second BKB. So 22 to 14, the overall kill score for now. Roshan gonna respawn in 14 seconds as well, Rave. They might not even care about this. Maybe they're gonna go scout things out, leave a Plague Ward in the Roche pit, just check if it spawns as Myth. They are completely grouped up, but they're gonna have to TP all of them back home. Akels is gonna be the frontliner, of course. The so-called bouncer. Might as well try to buy something up, doesn't have buyback anyway, Cheo. Lincoln's popped your, he jumps in, Silence is there, but he gets the BKB off. Not the best BKB usage though, and he's low on mana. Doesn't even have enough for battle trance, but he's trying to go for the Rax anyway. Stun will be there, but boom will, his blink a little bit too short. Cheo pounces up onto Lakels, they want to go for the kills, but blink per circus goal catches too. No, he goes down, no buyback, reincarnation pop, my bro. Goes for his ultimate, but it's not gonna be nearly enough. Rior might lose his life. Or yeah, he does go down in the end as Lakels, well, he's gonna get tanked. This game is over. GG is called another dunk, Chrissy. Just well played by Rave. For for a while, Myth were looking good, but they just... They couldn't keep up any kind of pressure, Rave. They just grouped up, made it so that suddenly Bat are not that effective at all. Especially the Bat Rider Sky of Mage combination. They got their BKBs, they were patient and just farmed a little bit better. And Rave King core just... He needs so many items to be super scary. Unless you really just get like an early blink and with blink rave fire blast get already kills but that was just not this kind of game so a little bit unfortunate but guys i guess it is rather good to see a series actually going to three games not like star ladder these days just two two zero two zero all the freaking time but as i say that we're gonna head into game number three's lobby now between rave and myth trust to see who's actually gonna advance to the next round and well having said that guys hopefully you enjoyed the cast if you did be sure to follow hefla tv for more content it is Hefla TV on both Facebook and Twitter where we're going to update you with the streams. Also, if you want to follow me, leave me some feedback or if you just like me in general or hate me, I don't know. It is at Coucher pretty much everywhere. But having said that, heading into game number 3's lobby. So see you guys there in a couple of minutes time.